Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to take a look at Cisco IOS command line interface modes. The command line interface is going to be what you see when you access a router or a switch unless you're using a, a web page and accessing it via HTTP. But 95% of the stuff you're going to do on routers and switches will be done at the command line interface. I'm going to refer to this as the CLI going out because command line interface is just too many damn words for me to say all the time. So the CLI is going to look, you know, much like a DOS prompt or a Unix prompt if you're used to those. Uh, it's all text-based. One thing that you'll want to know is that if you issue a question mark at the uh, command prompt, it will give you a list of the available commands. So CLI has different command modes, and that's what we're looking at today. Each command mode has a different set of commands that are available to it. So again, entering that question mark will show you the commands that are available, and you'll notice that when you're in different modes, that you have different sets or subsets of commands that are available to you. Command modes are basically set up like a hierarchy, whereas you start off in, uh, in this case, like user exec mode, which we'll take a look at. It's a low-level mode. Uh, doesn't have a lot of commands then you can progress from that to privilege exec mode to global configuration mode and we'll take a look at these three those first three that I just mentioned uh, also we'll look at one of the configuration sub modes which is interface configuration mode and I'll also throw in a bonus mode that you <laughs> You'll not want to see in production, but you will want to be aware of it. User exec mode, and as we saw in the last slide, this is one of the, is the lowest level of that hierarchy that I mentioned. Really, there's only two modes. There's exec mode and there's configuration mode. It's just that each of those modes is broken up into different sub modes. And by default, exec mode has user exec mode, which is a low level, and then privileged exec mode, which we'll see in a little bit, which is basically super user level. In exec mode, you don't make changes to the running configuration. You have to be in configuration mode for that. So a lot of the commands you issue here are the Cisco refers to these as one-time commands, like show commands. Basically, it's going to be information gathering, troubleshooting, not making any changes. It says here exec mode commands are not saved across reboots of the router. That's because you're not changing the configuration. You're just doing show commands, which really just give you a snapshot of certain elements of the Cisco device as it is right now. So you would use show commands to see, you know, error counts, uh, if interfaces are up, stuff like that. You can also use commands that aren't show commands, but are like ping commands to see if you can reach a remote device from your router. A lot of stuff like that. It's troubleshooting and information gathering. So anyways, let's take a look at this, how exec mode is set up. Cisco, by default, gives you two modes in exec mode and that's user exec mode which is the low level mode and like I said privilege exec mode which is basically the super user mode. How this is actually set up though in the background is that there are 16 possible levels of privilege that you can have in exec mode and they range from zero which basically in privilege level zero all you can do is either get into a more privileged mode or get the fuck off the router there's not a lot you can do there up to privilege level 15 which gives you every command you can do anything you want it's god mode at that point and user exec mode is actually privilege level one so by default and i stress by default your production setup might be different when you log into a cisco device you are put into user exec mode, which I mentioned is privilege level one. You can verify what privilege level you're in at any point by issuing the show privilege command from the command prompt, and it will give you a number between zero and 15 to show you what your actual privilege is. And this is from the Cisco documentation. Uh, here it says user exec mode is set to default privilege level one. In general, the user exec commands allow you to connect to remote devices, change terminal line settings, and I'm not so down with that. Uh, perform basic tests and list syph syphilis <laughs> and list system information. So like I said, information gathering and some troubleshooting. The user exec mode prompt consists of the host name of the device followed by, they call it an angle bracket. I call it a greater than sign, but whatever. This prompt is actually present in privilege level zero and level one. Uh, level one is exec, user exec mode. You should never really be in privilege level zero, but just so you know, it, just because you see this doesn't necessarily technically mean you're in user exec mode, but it's a good indicator. It means that you're in either zero or one. We can see here, this is what this is going to look like on the uh, CLI. R1 is our host name, and remember we said that in user exec mode, the prompt that we'll have is the greater than sign. Uh, also, like I told you, if you issue the show privilege command, it will verify which privilege level you're in, and we're in level one, 
which is user exec mode. If you issue the question mark from the command prompt, it will give you a list of commands that are available to you in this privilege mode. And you can see there's there's a few of them here. There's not a lot. I did have to truncate the output for this uh, slide, but if you were in a higher level, you would see a buttload more commands. So you can see like commands like clear, that's to clear some counters, connect, you can open a terminal connection, you can ping, um, enable, that's an important one to remember because that's going to be your gateway into the higher privilege levels. Exit gets you out of the router. The two major commands that are not present in user exec mode are figure terminal and what configure terminal does is that gets you into the configuration mode which allows you to make changes to the router and we'll visit that in a few slides that's one of the CLI modes the other command that's missing is reload if you issue reload from the CLI it will reboot the router so you can see in user exec mode there's not a lot of damage you can do and that's why by default this is what Cisco will allow you access to and this makes sense this is great for uh, low-level administrators um, help desk Stuff, people like that that you want to allow access to your devices so that they can do some basic troubleshooting maybe gather some information but they cannot really fuck stuff up they can't configure changes to the uh, device and they also can't go ahead and arbitrarily reload it having this be the default mode that you're dropped into in a Cisco device is actually a security feature because just because you have access to the device doesn't mean that you can make changes. There's actually one more step that you have to go through to uh, be able to get into the position to be able to make changes and we'll see that in the next slide. Ah, privileged exec mode. So by default on a Cisco device you will enter the device in user exec mode which is privilege level one and like I said there are two built-in exec modes one is user which we just saw and the other one is privilege the user is analogous to read-only mode and privilege exec mode is analogous to super user or god mode because in this mode you will be in privilege level 15 which is the highest of those those privilege levels and you could do any damn thing you want so you want to make sure that you don't have monkeys in privilege exec mode that should not be in there and the way that you do that generally and is that you have a password that's configured on your device it's called the enable password and that's why you'll hear out in the field quite a bit privilege exec mode referred to as enable mode and I do that all the time I will try to for the duration of this lesson use the technical term of privileged exec mode because that's what Cisco calls it and that's what you will see on your exam but if you hear enable mode you should know that that's exactly what they're referring to is privilege exec mode or privilege level 15 okay I don't want to get a lot into passwords or security but like I mentioned there's generally going to be an enable password configured on your device so if you're in user exec mode and you want to get into privilege exec mode you will issue the command enable and then and hopefully it will prompt you for a password this password has to be configured if you are connected to the router via the console port and there is no enable password configured if you type the command enable and hit enter because there is no enable password configured you will go directly into privilege exec mode and you will have god access this is not a good thing make sure your routers have an enable password configured now with this kind of makes sense because with the console connection you're generally sitting there with a laptop and a rollover cable connected into the console port and you know when you get a router out of the box it doesn't have an enable password configured so you want to be able to get into enable mode so this behavior makes sense this is covered in a different lesson but set a fucking enable password because it's just basic security now this behavior is markedly different if you are accessing the router externally say that you're telnetting to the device from another router or wherever when you're coming in that way you're going through uh, what are called the virtual TTY lines we'll look at that later you're not connected to the console port so if you go that method by default you'll go into user exec mode if you issued the enable command from there from user exec mode while connected via the VTY line and there is no enable password configured you will not be able to get into privilege exec mode because Cisco has added this little bit of extra security specifically for remote connections and this is a good thing this is so you you put your router on the uh, network and you forget to put a uh, enable password on there Joe Blow finds out about your router he gets into it he cannot get into privilege exec mode unless he's connected to the console port a little bit of extra security also kind of a gotcha if you're used to configuring routers on your desk I'll discuss that in a different lesson but you should know that there is that fundamental difference in the way that it treats access to the enable mode or privilege exec mode based on 
which line is being accessed. This can bite you in the butt if you're used to connecting via the console line. You may not even put any second thought into the enable password. I don't want to go too deep into this. Basic router security, configure and enable password on all your devices and we'll leave it at that.